This is gonna be your 10 tips to win. I know you guys are hanging out with me on Twitch all the time and I love you guys. I see you guys in the chat, Ross, Gadlick, Truix, everybody love. But I never really talked to you guys on YouTube. I just wanna say thanks to everybody on YouTube. You guys are so killing it. Shout out to Xylator for coming out with the great content. And we just hit over a thousand subs on YouTube, so I appreciate y'all. Uh, and um, we're gonna keep making content. So hopefully you enjoy it. These first three tips really tie into each other, but I think they're uh, very, very, very important for players to understand. So I've had to put all three of them in at the beginning. Tip number one on how to win at spell break is that movement is the number one priority in spell break, specifically vertical movement. Not only with jumping and levitating, there are other runes and skills that will allow you to get that vertical movement as well. So focus on learning how to move well vertically and just quick paced movement in general. It's what sets uh, Spellbreak aside with its combat. Tip number two, you cannot talk about movement and how important movement is in Spellbreak without mentioning how important mana management is because the vertical movement that you see here is tied to your mana pool. If you notice when I levitate here, you will see my mana in the center start to deplete. Mana is your most valuable resource other than health and armor because without health and armor you can't survive. But mana allows you to use your spells and uh, do damage, your primary source of damage. Knowing how much uh, spells that you can shoot out when you have different rarity of amulets is gonna be very, very important for you to be able to anticipate what you're gonna be able to do during that battle and, and get that dub, man, all right? Tip number three, runes, these runes right here, are specifically made to help you with movement. So basically runes are there. There are a couple utility runes, um, but almost every single rune has at least a little bit of a movement um, buff on it. For the majority of the runes uh, here, they are made specifically to give you mobility, to help you close the gap and all that good stuff. Also, if you look behind me here, you'll notice that there are four skills on my class. In almost every single class in Spellbreak, there is a skill in that class's toolkit that will give you uh, mobility and it will allow you to get that movement that you need, but also allow you to maintain your mana. Use your runes, use your skills to get that movement that you need. It will help you save your mana and allow you to get those those attacks off that you need to, uh, to, to win the game man, and get the W done. Tip number four. Land based on the strength of your class. Frostborn or Conduit, you might want to land uh, from a medium range from where you actually want to drop so that you can use that range of that, that class to melt down hey guys, your opponents. Their sorceries can be very, very strong early game if you can utilize them properly. Hitting somebody with the, uh, with the lightning sorcery is very, very strong. It does damage, and it also does a nice bit of CC. Also with the Frostborn, it doesn't do damage, but it does quite a bit of CC. Um, and if you're able to use that and land a nice frost shot, you can really, really do tons of damage. If you're playing classes like Pyromancer, Stone Shaper, or Toxicologist, sometimes Tempest as well, but Tempest is a little tricky. Uh, you can use those classes to drop down in hot drops, in close quarter situations, and still come out on top pretty, pretty easily. Tip number five, always be replenishing your potions. Sometimes the consumables are very scarce in the Hollowlands. Uh, sometimes people run talents like Thirsty and they will be consuming a lot more potions than normal. So there's gonna be a lot less potions there for you to pick up. So make sure that you are always stocked up on your potions. I prefer to carry too small and too large of each type at the end of the game at the final circle being able to get a potion off in any form will give you a huge advantage and can often help you secure the dub tip number six this is one that uh you guys are probably going to roll your eyes at some of you guys um but you probably have already learned this one the hard way always expect the third party in spell break the attacks and abilities are very loud uh, visually and audibly so they telegraph themselves to every other player around, and it's very, very easy for people to spot out when a, when a battle's going on, and people want to take advantage of that. As soon as you exile somebody, don't go straight for the goodies. Look around, get to the high ground, get to a position where you can see that loot and use it as bait for people, because they will normally be coming in after a battle. So you can anticipate that and use it to your advantage. Tip number seven. 
Talents are one of the shining gems of what makes Spellbreak unique and amazing. In this game, you truly feel like your own battle mage. That being said, crafting a build that helps facilitate your play style is key, and keeping in mind how that build works is even more important. So if you're running something like Recovery, uh, for instance, is what I use, um, you know that if you can kite your opponent around for a little while, you're going to be able to regenerate that HP, and you're going to be able to get the advantage on your enemy. So it's really important to know that. Or if you're running something like Scavenging, uh, and you realize that whenever you exile a player, you're going to get armor and health back, you might be more willing to put yourself in a vulnerable position in order to secure that kill so you can get your armor and your health back. So just knowing knowing what your talents do and how they work together and playing to the strengths of that build and just knowing what you prefer to play and, and what talents can help you make that playstyle stronger is also extremely important. Tip number Eight, know your class. Read the skills of your class. Understand how your class works together, how the synergies within this toolkit works, what kind of vague play style is laid out by the developers with this toolkit, and how you can make it work for your play style. And also, one of the very big, big things is learning which one of your skills kind of activates your class. In almost every single class, there's an ability that really takes your class to the next level. Um, Pyromancer, we got Firefly that really makes really makes the, the class very very strong. Uh, you got Toxicologist when you get Vanishing Mist, it makes your class very very strong. Outbreak makes it even stronger. Um, just knowing that you have stuff like Level Two Updraft on Tempest will also activate Tempest and make it give it that much more needed vertical movement that makes Tempest very strong. And pay attention to when you unlock your skills extremely important tip number nine tip number nine this one is very important and I think you guys will appreciate this I don't see a lot of people talking about this on their guides learn combat synergies basically know what areas of the battlefield that each gauntlet covers well and how they complement each other don't only learn the elemental combinations of the gauntlets but learn how they can cover each other's weaknesses uh, whenever they're in there in combat for instance uh, you might think that frost and fire are horrible to combine because they cancel each other out Yes, that's true. They, they do cancel each other out However, those two gauntlets really really have a very very strong combat synergy because frost works extremely well from mid to long range and Fire works really really well from close to mid range. So they cover the entire battlefield they they do extremely high damage and they just really, really do a great job of keeping yourself covered whenever you're in combat and making sure that you have an option in any situation uh, that you might find yourself in. Tip number 10, to give you the advantage and the edge that you need to conquer every single person on the Hollow Lands. Learn rune synergies. In Spellbreak, there are certain runes that really help push certain classes to the next level. You may have already seen Shadow Step, and you may have already been slapped into the next lobby before you even knew what was happening. That's because runes like Invisibility and Shadow Step really, really help activate the Toxicologist skill set because of the Vanishing Mist playstyle of going invisible and having that quick dash in and out of combat. And you also have the uh, Outbreak, so the damage increase. So when you're using runes like Invisibility or Shadow Step, every single time that you go invisible, you not only have the stealthiness of that rune that's just inherent by the rune itself, but you also have a damage increase now. When you're playing Stone Shaper, if you use Featherfall, you can use that synergy of that rune to really take people by surprise because in the Stone Shaper class, there is an ability called Bedrock and it will make you crash to the ground extremely fast. So you go up very high in a very slow, floaty type feather manner with Featherfall and then you attack and you slam to the ground like a meteor and it just takes people off guard. It's a very, very good vertical evasive maneuver. So learn what runes synergize with your class and your build and use those runes properly to activate and push your class to the next level. Hopefully it helps you get a better understanding of what makes a good player a good player in Spellbreak. If you have any questions, you can always ask me in Twitch chat. If you're watching this on YouTube, I love you guys. Thank you so much for supporting it. And uh, also, use the creator code up above if you buy any of that, of that little coins, man. All right? All right. I love y'all. All right. Cool.